of a second. Well, as usual, a very realistic and pragmatic Michael Schumacher. But this has been a fine Grand Prix and a fine result for Formula One because Jonathan, Formula One really needs Ferrari. Absolutely, yes. And it really did look as if the only way that Ferrari were going to win a Grand Prix this year was when Schumacher's flair in the wet, as we saw at Spain, was going to do it. But here we've seen that's not the case. I really wouldn't have put, I and I don't think many people would have put much money on Schumacher winning here. This fast sweeping circuit demands a car with good aerodynamics, and we know that's not the, the Ferrari's strongest point. But I think what we have seen is, once again, Schumacher, as he did last year, um, just get everything right, not just in the cockpit driving, but also in terms of the strategy. It, he, he lucked into it to an extent here. Uh, they ran, obviously, a short first stop. It did look as if his early race performance was particularly impressive. It did look as if he was not running as much fuel as the Williams, and indeed that obviously was the case. But uh, having said that, um, he still managed to put in performances that kept him in front in the later part of the race, once the fuel stops were done, when the, when the amount of fuel did not come into it. Villeneuve was obviously the quicker driver, or the, he was not the quicker driver. The Villeneuve-Williams combination was the quicker combination, but as we've seen so often, even on a circuit like this, in which overtaking is possible, um, if not easy, if you can get ahead, as Schumacher did, on those pit stops with that early first stop that he was fortunate to make, which was when the safety car came out, it was that move that really determined the fact that Schumacher was going to win, given the fact that both guys are very good indeed. Well, great race for Villeneuve, not so great for Damon Hill. He's with Tony Jardine. Let's see what he thinks. Damon, you're just assessing the situation. You've just got out of the car. You actually finished in fifth place. What, what was your story of the race? Well, I didn't get a good start. Um, I got off the line okay, and then I got towed past by Coulthard. But uh, the car was really, I don't know, we, we, we should have done a lot better than we did, I think, uh, in the race. But uh, I, the pit stop was the crucial thing. I came up the pit lane and there was a safety car on the track and uh, I got the signal to come in. And then I got a signal to stay out. So <laughs> I had to stay out, which put me behind Berger and uh, the other guy. So there was, uh, basically I haven't had a chance to talk to the team yet, so I can't get the full story. But uh, it, was a, it was a, probably cost me a few places there. We went in to speak to your technical people in the garage and they said that you complained of severe understeer and then we saw you adjusting your wing in the pit stop. Yeah, on the first run I had very bad understeer in the car, but I mean I was in traffic so that tends to affect the car quite a lot, but and the car was much better on the last stint, but uh, it was, you know, there was, the next car was 18 seconds up the road by then. There was a little bit of smoke coming out of the back of the car early on as well. Was there? I don't know. This is my spare car, so I had a problem with the the race car so he didn't want to take a risk and i'm just thankful for finishing and getting some points and keeping the gap down to a minimum exactly well the point situation now is 13 it was 17 before it could have been worse i think that's my view it could have been a lot worse than it, it was you know i'm i'm still pushing and i'm still hanging in there fighting and uh there's still it's going to be an exciting last three races now a little smile damon thanks very much all right thanks very much well, four points lost for Damon Hill, no points at all for David Coulthard. He's with Tony Jardine. David, that's a bitter pill to swallow. What happened? Well, I got a little knock at the first corner at the start of the race, and uh, everything felt as if it was going okay until the pit stop. And then I came out after the pit stop, and straight away I was running two seconds a lap slower, even with new tires. And the car felt uh, very strange at the back end. Maybe when the car was coming up or something, there was, uh, during the pit stop, something happened i'm not sure but certainly it was a different car and eventually just caught me out and off i went because that safety car came out uh, and did strategy change then because the two mclarens were out front yeah i think ideally it would have been best to have, come, to have come in under the pace car but the strategy we were running wouldn't allow us to have got all the fuel on board uh, we would have had to make another pit stop so that was the uh, that was the problem so we had to stay out david hard luck thanks for talking to us yeah, thanks 20 cars and drivers were to start the Belgian Grand Prix. In fact, only 19 did so because Lavaggi failed to qualify. Of the 19 that started, 10 finished. Ironically, the last one to finish was Pedro Lamy, who was Lavaggi's teammate in the Minardi team. 
and uh, neither of the Jordan drivers finished, uh, Barry Kello out and then Martin Brundle. I think he's with Tony now. Uh, Martin, desperately hard luck. Everything had looked very good. You were up to seventh place and then you just dropped back. What happened? Unfortunately, we lost the engine, a bit of crankcase pressure, probably a piston or a thing. The real shame was the safety car for us today. I one stopped uh, and I was looking really strong. I was keeping the Benettons very much in sight and I only had to make one fuel stop and it all, got, it all went wrong under the safety car, forcing us into a two-stop strategy. And uh, the, the, the dice just wouldn't roll for me today, but it was still looking quite strong towards the end. I was close to Gerhard, um, but the engine broke. Well, the car seems good. You made a lot of improvements. You're looking forward to Monza now. Yeah, I look forward to all the Grand Prix, but yeah, I'm really confident. I feel like I'm on a wave. Thanks, Martin. Thanks. Well, sadly, we don't know whether Martin is going to be with the Jordan team next year any more than we know whether Rubens Barrichello is going to be with the Jordan team next year. You've heard from Jonathan that there are all sorts of rumours about who is going where in 1997. This is about the time of the year when they build to a climax. But uh, that's Eau Rouge as it is now, I'm looking up towards La Source. Let's have a look back at the start of the Belgian Grand Prix of 1996. So on the left, you can see Jacques Villeneuve surging away. Schumacher comes up, Hill in third position, and then the McLaren. Now look for the incident. There is the tap there for the Jordan. And there was Herbert up in the air in the Sauber. Coming out there, a whole range of cars, including Barrichello, all involved in that first lap contretour. We see that so often here. There is Panis getting out of his Ligier. The difficulty of 20 cars all braking from 150 miles an hour right down to 20 or 30 miles an hour. That's all it is in those tight, confined spaces. Causes problems so much. There's Hacken in past Hill. And uh, that gets sweeps around the outside. And uh, in fact, David Coulthard there in third place. And um, coming round. And a very, very good start, of course, from Jacques Villeneuve. He's really got the technique of starting Williams cars, even though it continues to provide David, uh, Damon Hill with a problem. But, of course, Hill was on that outer side, that left-hand side of the track was a little bit uh, damper, a little bit of water streaking across, and that, there's no doubt, would have been a bit of a handicap. But having said that, David Coulthard was on the same side, and he's now up there in third place. One thing that went totally wrong in Belgium today, I'm delighted to say, is the weather forecast. We were expecting driving rain, even thunderstorms. It started off damp, it progressively got drier and drier and hotter and hotter. In fact, the temperature now, as I'm talking to you, is just under 25 degrees. When the race started, it was 21 degrees. So, as Olivier Parnis walks in, and he only got as far as La Source on the first lap, we know that the heat must have had some effect on the cars and drivers. Now that's Heinz Howard Frensen, and of course he was in the news for being the, one of the drivers, or the driver, who was perhaps most likely to go to Williams if Damon Hill didn't stay. Now looking at the driver lineup for next year, let's see what we know. We know that Michael Schumacher and Eddie Irvine are going to stay at Ferrari. I'm pretty sure that uh, Jean Alesi and Gerhard Berger are going to stay at Benetton. We know that David Coulthard is staying at McLaren. The second McLaren seat is a question mark. And the reason for that is because Mika Hakkinen's contract expires at the end of this year, but it's negotiating time, and I think it's only natural for Ron Dennis to look around, clearly, to just do a little bit of gentle undermining of Hakkinen's position. And having said that, Hakkinen's come back with a very powerful retort to that with his performance today, and I'd be surprised to see Hakkinen not continue with McLaren next year. But, of course, Williams is the one that's most likely. Villeneuve securely at Williams for the second, for the second year next year, uh, but the question is, of Damon Hill, will he stay there or not? So the Belgian Grand Prix won by Michael Schumacher and Ferrari. They are back. Villeneuve underlines his class in his first year of Grand Prix racing and Mika Hakkinen and McLaren have done a superb job. So there we are. They're on the podium. They're three very happy men with three happy and different constructors behind them. Ferrari, Williams and McLaren and it's uh, been a, an outstandingly good Belgian Grand Prix. Weather, racing, and the return to the front of Michael Schumacher, the double world champion, and his new car, Ferrari. 
Yes, but another poor start from Damon Hill, and as you heard from him, some confusion cost him points today. But a great driver, Michael Schumacher, got the tactics absolutely right to claim Ferrari's second victory of the season. He finished ahead of Jacques Villeneuve, and Mika Hakkinen in third place, Jean Alesi behind him, and then Damon Hill, two uh, crucial points for him, with Gerhard Berger in sixth place. So, in the Drivers' Championship, Hill's lead is now cut to 13 points. Jacques Villeneuve uh, still the only man who can uh, beat Hill to the championship. Schumacher is now moved into third place, one point ahead of Alesi. Well, in the constructors, Williams claimed the title last time. The positions remain unchanged. But there will be some questions asked of Damon Hill as the pressure of the championship reaches its climax. He can clinch it, though, in Monza. That's the next stop, and you'll be able to see live coverage of the Italian Grand Prix here on Sunday Grandstand on September the 8th. The highlights tonight from Spa are at 5 past 8 on BBC Two. For now, bye-bye.